Look at my little buddy I made. You know? He's a cutie. He's probably some evil, wicked leaf cutter. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, let's put him down and get on with the show here. There is nothing like these cool fall moorings when that sun first comes out and, and starts hitting you and that feels fantastic. If I was up north, I'd be uh, splayed out on a rock just soaking it in and getting my heat back in me. But anyway, today is a project day and we have this project here. This is the Bug and Bee Hotel. And this is sent to me by Jim Hamill. So thanks, Jim. This is a great idea. Uh, kind of a new concept to me. I guess it works probably best in an urban environment because I got more junk laying around here that the, the bugs will live in. But it's also kind of artsy. And uh, it's going to look cool just on, just you know on a wall. So what we got here, we got pine cones, sticks, bigger sticks with holes drilled in, and uh, some bark up in the top here. And the center part here is a uh, is a butterfly refuge. So I'm going to use all these in the project. And the whole, well, let's get the nuts and bolts. The idea is, if you had one of these near your garden, you would house all your uh, your bugs, your, your good bugs, for your garden. You got your uh, pollinating bees, solo bees types, not the hive types, but uh, You've got all your ladybugs and your butterflies and uh, your aphid and uh, aphid and mite eating bugs, and uh, you house them and keep them near your garden. But also, you're giving a place a uh, refuge for them to hibernate in the winter time and uh, to lay their eggs to carry over for the the spring. So it's kind of a cool concept, and uh, I'm kind of looking forward to making it. So. I love, this is what I love, something so random, I never would have thought of this, and that's why I'm asking you guys to send me your pins and pit, pins and picks, picks and pins, and uh, yeah, but like I said, I'm going to put my spin on it, so I'm going to take this idea, and I think I'm going to go down and uh, I'm going to start with the, the heart of it, it's going to be like an old uh, old window frame, so enough talking, let's get working. Got a couple different options, but I uh, kind of like all the uh, all the different compartments for this one. So I think we use this one. What I want to do first is I want to clean out all the glazing. I want to get the glass out there and. Uh, Maybe hopefully not smash it all. I'm gonna take an old chisel and it's gonna start going out the uh, the back of the mullions and the glazing. No glass saved. <laughs> I forgot about the uh, the window points and they're too rotten to pull out. So these old school windows, I'll give you a quick lesson. They would make these frames, and the, and the, like the mullion here, you see how there's a, there's a lip there that the glass can sit on. And then you put your window points in. There's one right here. There's already nothing left of it. But uh, a window point, basically you put your glass set in on this little shelf in here. You can see how there's a, a shelf to lay the glass on. And you take uh, window points. Now window points, are all they are is a little pointy tack like thing. And you basically just lay that on the glass. You lay it on the glass like that and then you push it into the frame and that holds your glass in place. And then you take your uh, putty your, uh, your glazing putty and you just put that right on top of the glass and into the frame and that hardens and then it's solid and that's why I break the glass. <laughs> Alright, what I want to 
want to do now is I know it's going to weaken the mullion, but I'm going to take this back ledge off because what I want to do is I got a lot of pine, barn board pine. And I'm going to reframe all these dividers with pine. So I want to get these little, the back of the uh, the mullion off. And like I said, I know it's going to weaken it, but it's also going to be fastened to new wood in the box. So again, least favorite chisel and just attack. going to take off so we've lost all the integrity of that mullion but we're going to replace it with the frame But all I did was basically make a uh, make a face out of this window. All right. So you saw me pin all the uh, mullions together just so nothing falls apart. And now I'm going to build the frame and make it solid again. Tobacco sticks. These things are uh, old and dry, and believe it or not, they still have a sweet smell to them. These are what they use to hang tobacco on, and the guy in the kiln, the tobacco kiln, he'd be like a rafter to rafter. These would just sit on the, uh, basically most of them were two by sixes back in the day, and they would sit and they would hang all the tobacco, and they'd be from the bottom to the top, probably, uh, I'm not even sure, maybe 18 feet high. And these guys, the uh, the kiln hanger, he'd be jumping from side to side to side. And as the, the boat driver, and the, they come off the chute and they have to hang him. And he'd just be up there and that was his job. And it was hot and it was thankless, but he got paid pretty good. So anyway, tobacco sticks. I made this window flush because I want to trim off the front with the uh, tobacco sticks. And then the gable end of the... Uh, the house here, the bug house, I want to leave these sticks half inch apart up in the gable end for the uh, the butterfly sanctuary. Alright, so I'm going to put a perch up in the gable, but I'm going to leave these open and that's just going to tie everything in together. And the only downside is going to be that this fresh pine is going to shine for the first six months, but uh, it'll gray up and everything will, will look cool. And then one more thing. I got some wire here, it's just rabbit wire, half by one inch. I'm going to, uh, I don't know, I'll probably make a pattern like like so. I'm going uh, to put the wire on the inside to hold in the uh, pine cones and bark. Pine cones, bark, pine cones, whatever. And uh, I'm going to have to put that on the inside before I put the, the shelves in there. So, whew, a lot of talking.
We're making progress. Gonna get some uh, some tin on the roof. Time to get some uh, supplies to fill our little cubbies. All right, well, I got the uh, loose stuff. So I got uh, pine cones, straw, and I've got uh, spruce cones. And I gotta get them in there so I can close up the back and everything else will just build from the front. So that's what we're gonna do. Now we need a, uh, a stick. We're gonna put screen over this whole thing. So I need some uh, sticks up in the uh, the attic up here for the uh, for the butterflies to perch on. See my uh, my butterfly? Well, you'll see it outside maybe. But I got lots of sticks in there for them to perch on. It looks cool. Anyway, I've got uh, three filled. I've got bark. I've got little sticks. I got big sticks. I got firewood. I've got uh, lumber square. And uh, I'm going to drill a whole whack of holes, probably quarter inch, eighth inch in that area, maybe a few three eighths. And uh, yeah, we're just going to fill the rest in with uh, different types of woods.
Okay, there's the picture Jim sent me. And here is our finished little uh, bee and bug house, hotel, whatever you want to call it. That was a fun little project. And uh, I may have overdone it. This was the idea to put my take on it, but I, I maybe put a little bit too much time for this type of video. But anyway, it was fun. And it's going to be really fun to watch as uh, time goes on. Like check in the late fall and the spring and see see what's actually happening. It's a little uh, a little e ecosystem I can watch, so it's pretty cool. So thanks, Jim, for the pick. And uh, again, a reminder: think rustic, seasonal. I don't care. Porch decoration, anything. Send me your pins, and uh, if I like them, I'll give them a go. So that's it for now, and I will catch you on the next one. See you guys.